record, 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 record. There are way too many things to turn on before I start doing this. <laughs> this is the brand new Garmin Foreigner 55. Garmin's latest budget offering to get you into the Garmin ecosystem for under 200 bucks. It offers all the same features that were available in the older Garmin 45 that launched about two years ago, but it brings it up to today's standards with a few new unique features that are exclusive to the 55. Is it worth your hard earned money and can it compete in today's already super aggressive sub $200 fitness wearable market? We're gonna find out in this video today. Before we dive in, if you find this video helpful, enjoyable, educational, anything, please consider giving me a thumbs up down below and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. Wouldn't you love that? I also want to mention that this video is not sponsored by Garmin in any way. However, they did send me the Foreigner 55 for the purpose of this video. Like I said, the Foreigner 55 is a lot like its older counterpart with the Foreigner 45. Unfortunately, I don't have a Foreigner 45 in my possession and I've actually never used one. So I'll be looking at this with a fresh perspective. In terms of the actual hardware, the Foreigner 55 is made completely out of plastic. There is no metal here. However, I think the buttons might be metal. They might be plastic. I'm not Really sure. The 455 comes in at a 42 millimeter diameter and it's about 11 and a half millimeters thick, so it's a very small watch. And for a quick size comparison, I've got the new 455 on the left here. Next to it, I've actually got the new 945 LTE that launched the same time as the 455. Moving on, we've got the 945, then we've got the Garmin Phoenix 6S and the big chunky Garmin Enduro. And you can see if we compare the Garmin 455 in my left hand to the Garmin Phoenix 6S in my right hand, they're just about the same size, however, the 6S is quite a bit thicker. And for reference, this is how the Garmin 455 looks on my 165 millimeter circumference wrist. The Garmin 455 comes in at just 37 grams, which is very light for a watch of this size. You really don't notice on your wrist at all, it is very lightweight. Unlike a lot of other Garmin watches that feature Gorilla Glass, this is not Gorilla Glass, so it's not quite as scratch resistant. However, in the week that I've been wearing this watch, I haven't scratched it yet, so there's that. Underneath that glass is the 1.04 inch display. This is an always on display that is sunlight readable. This is not something like an Apple Watch or an OLED display. It's a transflective display that's meant for function over being pretty. So it's very easy to view in direct sunlight when you're out running or doing bike riding or whatever. The Garmin 455 is of course waterproof down to 50 meters or five atmospheres. So it's perfectly fine for swimming in the pool or even open water swimming. And when we flip the watch over here, we can see on the left that there's the standard Garmin charging port. That's the same as all of their other watches. And in the middle here, we have Garmin's Elevate 3.0 heart rate sensor. I found this kind of interesting. Garmin just released the new Venue 2 and the new 945 LT here uh, and these both have new heart rate sensor on the back this is the elevate 4.0 heart rate sensor and in my testing this new heart rate sensor is pretty awesome and i was hoping to see it on the entry level watch as well but we didn't get that. We got the older Elevate 3.0 heart rate sensor. In terms of accuracy though, it's not all bad because this is such a lightweight watch. It doesn't bounce around a lot when it's on your wrist. So I found it to be actually pretty accurate even during intervals, you know, spiking up my heart rate really high and then dropping it. There were a few little quirks where it wouldn't be as responsive as the 945 LTE, but generally pretty good overall in terms of heart rate accuracy. And if it's not accurate enough for you, you can pair an external heart rate sensor to the 455, which is always a good feature to have. Something else you'll notice on the new 455 is that they've equipped it with an industry standard watch band. This is a standard quick release 20 millimeter watch band. You can pop this off with your fingernail and swap it out with various colors you can get directly from Garmin or really cheap on Amazon. The user interface on the Garmin 455 is a lot like all the other Garmin's. It's a five button layout which I personally like. There's no touch screen here. Basically you do everything through the buttons and they work really well. The watch face you see here is fully customizable. You can download more from Garmin Connect IQ store if you wanna get really crazy with it, or you can pick from a handful that are pre-installed. Clicking up or down from the watch face brings you through the widget glances. This is nice to see at Garmin's lower price point here. Basically widget glances are a way of truncating views of full page widgets. So instead of a widget taking up your full screen, you can see more information from multiple widgets at a glance. At the top here, you can see that there are some advanced training tools built into the Garmin 455. We've got my estimated VO2 max here in this widget. Clicking down shows the race predictor. So this is based on my recent runs on how fast I could do a 5k, half marathon, 10k, or full marathon. And I think these numbers are actually pretty accurate. I think I could run a 338 marathon right now if I tried. Clicking down again brings up to the recovery advisor, which will tell you how long it takes to recover after your last run. The other widgets that come pre-installed out of the box are your recent history of running or riding or whatever. We've got our heart rate widget. We've got the body battery widget 
widget, which is nice to see here. Notifications from your phone. The weather widget is installed here. We've got the calendar widget here that shows any calendar events from my phone. And we've also got Garmin Coach installed on the 455. Garmin Coach is pretty cool. It allows you to download and install training plans from Garmin Connect that are pre-made for distances up to marathon, if you're interested in that. Of course, the new Garmin 455 tracks your wellness data, your steps, your calories burned, all that stuff. It will also track your sleep data. However, this isn't the new sleep algorithm we've seen released on the Garmin 945 LTE and the Phoenix 6 and the Venue 2. It's the older sleep algorithm. I was hoping that they'd include that on the 455, but unfortunately they didn't. One new feature to the 455 that wasn't available on the previous 445 is the inclusion of suggested workouts. You can see here, if I go to start a run, it'll suggest that today I should do a threshold workout that's four by six minute at a 715 pace. And from there I can click do workout, dismiss, uh, target type or disable the prompt entirely. These suggestions are based on your current fitness level and your recovery data. So they're not just blindly suggesting things, it's actually based on your personal data, which is pretty cool. Another new feature that's coming to the Garmin 455 is the inclusion of Pace Pro. Pace Pro was available previously on the Garmin Phoenix 6, the 945, 745, 245, I think, a lot of other watches, but never on the baseline to the Foreigner lineup. And Pace Pro is pretty cool and very easy to set up. Basically, you can see here, I'll say create new Pace Pro strategy. This is in the Garmin Connect app on my phone. From there, it asks if I want to select a course or if I want to select a race distance. I'll just click a distance. Here, it asks if I want to run a 5K all the way up to a marathon or other if you want to do like an ultra marathon. And I'll say my goal time is 25 minutes and that's at a 803 minute pace. And here's the really cool part. You can actually select if you want a negative or positive split when it comes to your strategy. So if you want to run faster in the end, you can have a negative split or a positive split is what most people do. And as you tweak that slider, you can see how the graph above changes your pace. And after you sync this information over to the Garmin 455, it'll pop up on the watch while you're in the activity. This feature is kind of like a virtual partner and allows you to stay on pace to hit that goal time you set up at the beginning of your race. Previously on the older Garmin 445, there was kind of limited activity profiles to choose from. The 445 had all of the basics like running and cycling, indoor and outdoor and swimming, but that was kind of it. And Garmin heard the complaints of the users and they've included a lot more profiles in the Garmin 455. Also including the track run profile, which is great. Track run basically takes your first loop around a track and then it copies that loop on top of itself to create a super accurate GPS track of a track running activity. Of course, this needs to be on a regulation track, but it is a really cool feature and it works really well on my other garments. I haven't been able to test it here, but I assume it works the same way. Another new activity profile included on the 455 is the virtual run mode, and this is great for Zwift users. Virtual run will broadcast your heart rate data, your pace, and your cadence in real time to a computer or whatever else you're playing Zwift on. I'm not a big Zwift user, so I haven't really tried this out, but it is nice to see included on this watch. And there's also a handful of other activity profiles included on the 455. So if I scroll down, instead of just running, biking, swimming, all the basics, you'll find yoga, elliptical, high intensity, stair stepper, Pilates and breath work. So they've opened up a lot of functionality here on the 455. However, there's still no multi-sport or triathlon mode. So if you want that, you'll have to step up to something like a 745. In terms of battery life, that's also an area where Garmin has improved the Garmin 455. You can record up to 20 hours in a GPS activity or up to two weeks in standby time or smartwatch mode, which is pretty solid. The Garmin 455, of course, includes some smartwatch features. You've got things like calendar notifications. So if you've got a birthday coming up, it'll pop up on your watch. You can read your text messages when they come in. You can answer or decline phone calls when they come in. All the basics are here. In terms of GPS accuracy on the 455, I thought it did a pretty good job. I've taken the 455 out on several runs on the road, on trails, different situations, different tree cover, cloud cover, all of that. And in most situations, it did a pretty good job, totally acceptable. It's definitely not perfect and it's definitely not as good as the new 945 LTE that I've been testing, but acceptable overall. There were no surprises. It didn't go off into the woods for any reason. Uh, generally stayed on the road and on sharp corners, it would pick that up fairly accurately. Okay, final thoughts on the brand new Garmin 455 after using it for about a week. Again, not extensive use, but I think I can form an opinion about it. For $200, this is a pretty solid option for people who are interested in the Garmin ecosystem. If you're someone who really wants to get into Garmin, but you kind of had sticker shock when you saw the Garmin Phoenix 6 or the new 945 LTE, those watches cost in excess of $600. For that price, you could actually buy three of these, which is kind of crazy. However, I do wish there were a few more features on the 455. I wish they included the training 
load function that we see on the 400 245, 745, and 945. That would be kind of nice. I also would have liked to see the new Elevate 4.0 heart rate sensor on the back instead of the older Elevate 3.0 heart rate sensor. And one more minor complaint on the 455 is that it doesn't include the sunrise and sunset widget that's available on like all of the other watches. That's just a software thing. It's gotta be a freebie if they could include that. That would have been really nice. But for $200, you're getting a very capable watch with a lot of activity profiles. And I think most people would be pretty happy with it. And at the end of the day, if you're looking to get into the Garmin ecosystem, this is probably a great place to start. But if you look outside the Garmin ecosystem at something like the Coros Pace 2, that puts a lot of pressure on this Garmin 455 because it costs the same $200 and it's got a few more features up its sleeve. If you made it to the end of this video, you probably liked it. So you might as well give me a thumbs up down below and consider subscribing so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. That would be great. And with that, I think that's everything. I probably missed something because I always do, but I did my best and that's what matters. I'll see you next time.